All right, team. Um, G-Man, this one's for you. Um, this is game two. Ended up winning this game. For some reason, my memory, um, I remember wanting to review this game with you in particular. I don't know why, but we'll see. Um, I think the camera angle is a little bit glitched right now. Hopefully it fixes itself as the game goes on. There we go. <coughs> Careful about taking both boosts here. Because Eli would maybe want it. You can drive towards it. And if there were opponents going towards it, then I'd say, yeah, take it. Um, but off kickoff, it's almost always worse to take both boosts. Unless you see an opponent going for it, you take it right before them. So you probably could have left that there. Um, I think it, also because you wanted to take this boost, now you're too far pushed up. The ball's moving really fast, and so are you. So you don't want to be too far pushed up. Like, now you have to slam on your brakes, and now you're turning infield. In what world does this ball end up going in this direction? Um, not very many worlds. And so that's why you're out of position. Where if you were just right here, pointing forward... This would be so much better. And now you could call Colin off of this and just say, I'll take it. Or you could, or now you could start turning middle because you see that he has a pass opportunity. So literally you are literally pointing the wrong way. And all of that happened was just because you're too greedy to grab the second boost off kickoff and you were too close. So if you just, just play patient, slow down, you'd have been much better off there. Like that's why he, he Colin wanted to pass it to you. He was looking for you right here. Um, and he had to bail because you were like too close. Where if you would have seen that he was getting back and had the ball, um, you could have positioned yourself here. And honestly, it could have been a really goal, good goal opportunity. He would have hit a roller to you. You could have popped off the back roller for a double. Um, you could have just shot it. Um, or done a lot of stuff. So you got to let him pass it to you in there. Um, this is another thing. We need to think about how we're playing in the corner. So that first touch, that's kind of, you maybe could have hit it a little bit closer to yourself, whatever. That's a fine touch because you got a good recovery. Now you're going to be able to get a second touch. But now on your second touch, watch what you do. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. You can maybe bump this guy. You can honestly just demo this guy, take boost, and, and try to demo the other guy. You jump now. As soon as you jump now, you have no more options. You have no more options except to pinch this ball across the backboard where this guy's going to be waiting for it. What you want to do is just keep driving. Try to get behind this guy. Try to, like, dodge him and drive the ball up the wall and pop it out or um, see how the ball's gonna bounce. And if the ball gets any separation from the backboard, then you can hit it off the backboard and back to your team. But once you jump right now, like the ball did get a little bit of separation like um, I had talked about, but that was a little bit lucky to be honest. You didn't wait to confirm that it was gonna do that. Um, and you just jumped too early. Just save that jump a little bit longer. Good try to go for that demo there. This is good. Yeah, that's fine. This is fine. I don't know why Call was there, to be honest. Nice. Don't double jump. Do not. Do not double jump when you're challenging like this. Oh my gosh, this is so scary. You gotta save your flip because you have your double jump. If you want to use your double jump later, that's fine. If you realize you need your double jump, then use it. But if you you got to save your flip, this is the most important thing. Oh my gosh, I can already tell that this is going to give you so much mileage if you start doing this. Just single jump here. And if you would have just single jumped here, you would have been able to just take a soft touch on this ball and then land. Or at the last second, you could have flipped into the ball and got a lot more power on it. But once you double jump, it lets your opponents know like, oh, he can't do anything with this ball, which is true. What are you going to literally you went over the ball as well because you didn't need your double jump. And it was a good recovery touch to get past one, but like you could have just done so much better if you saved your flip. Okay, and then on the recovery here, be careful about just going to corner boost right here. I think this is the incorrect decision to go to corner boost. Eli has already made his play. Colin is out of net now. We need, if this ball gets past Colin, who's gonna save it if you're all the way over there? You just gotta grab boost, boost pad, 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 and either this pad or that pad at time of, to when you see what happens with the play. You can't just blindly go for corner. You're deciding right now in your brain that you're going to go for corner. You've already made the decision. You do not have enough info to know if you have enough time to go grab corner. It might work out in this situation. You might be able to grab it, which it probably is because they didn't score looking at the timeline. But just because it worked out this time doesn't mean it's always going to work out that way. Like, luckily, Colin wins that. Say that he, Colin got dunked right there and it starts just rolling in front of the net. This guy's cleaning it up all day before you get there. So you would have wanted to grab Pat, 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 and rotate in here. 
You don't have to jump this soon. You can possess this. He passes that way? Who's he passing to? You see all three people right there. I know you maybe want to beat this guy, but you have him beat already. You can just stay here and then wait until he jumps, and as soon as he jumps, you can like jump and react and beat him. And uh, then if you would have waited a little bit longer, the ball would have been in front of you, you could have taken a touch that rolls off the wall. Now you hit it awkwardly because you jump so soon. When you jump so soon like this, and you're hitting the ball like at this point, you have zero options right now. Like no, the only option you have is to kind of just pop this up towards their corner. I guess you could have gone for a crazy double right there, but like, yeah, that's insane. Just wait a little bit. Pads, pads, pads. Oh my gosh. Look at me pads you missed. Look at this padding right here. And look where you went. Right next to it. Ding, ding. And you went about pad, 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 pad. And you would have been swinging wider right now. Eli should not be there. <laughs> Eli should be grabbing that corner as you're swinging here. And then you're swinging up. It just would have been a much better position to swing wider there. And we just score off that. That's pretty crazy that they messed up that bad. You don't have to do this. <laughs> you don't have to go for this read. It, you don't know if this ball's bouncing out or if it's bouncing down right now. You have no idea. Just stay on the wall, stay on the wall, stay on the wall. And then it bounces out. Okay, you were covering that it bounces down. Because uh, that's like the safer play. Then it bounces out, then you can drive down and start going towards it. They literally missed right there. You'd be catching it at with one person B. You just, right here, if you just catch this and flick, boom, you have a goal. And Eli has a poopy angle now. But you would have had the perfect angle if you just waited. You went for the read of a lifetime. Um, okay, here's another thing. I'm going to go back. Watch for where, where's Eli? Where's Eli? You don't see him in this whole half of the field. You don't see him, you don't see him. You still don't see him, you still don't see him. That means he's behind you now. He's over here. You need to play this side, and Eli comes in to play the middle position in the fine goal. So you want to play here, especially because most likely scenario, Colin just gave it away. Most likely scenario, they boom it and rasp back around the wall. You want to be there soon. That's crazy that Colin got there first, actually. They should have been there. Um, but Eli could have rotated in and taken this position. He <laughs> probably should have scored that as well. That's unfortunate. And you can still shoot from this side. If you come here and you realize, oh, shoot, Colin uh, made the pass, you wouldn't have been there for this pass. But if he made a pass that came out this side, then you can shoot from this side. And Eli should have been over there. See, this ball is fine to go for it because you're going to play it to the side and Colin can turn for it or you can like double it off the wall. I think you're a little bit too far inward. This ball is going to be awkward. Like, look where your car is pointing. Look where the ball is. This is going to be really awkward for you to air roll and get to it. Where if when you rotated, you rotated out wider a little bit, like even to here, then this ball would be so much easier to go for. So I want to look at how you rotate it. You're turning in right now. I think it's because you want that pad. But I think the positioning is just better to see where the ball goes. And you can start driving towards this boost. They have all the time in the world to go for it. If you rotate out wider. Because now you're going to drop it straight down, and this is big no-no. You really are diming them up. If you're going to go for that ball, you have to go for it in a way that you put it to the side to buy your team time. As last man, you're committing. You need to buy time. And instead, you actually got less time. You're passing it back to them. Where if you didn't go at all, the ball would have landed over here, which would have bought us more time. You actually are helping the opponents right now by hitting this. Luckily, Eli was, uh, tries to go for a demo. Yeah, well, the ball's over your head. Yeah, just rotate out. This is fine. Now you're in a better position. Nice. Just see what he does. Oh, my. You either need to go for it right now, or you need to completely wait and confirm that you can get a good touch. That guy's already in the air. Once they jump in the air before you, you're getting beat. Oh, but he faked you. Well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> that was a weird situation. I beat that guy to the boost. This is perfect. No, demo him. No, 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 no. You, you took his boost. You know he's a sitting duck middle now. 
because he's waiting for this shot. As you're swinging across to go back to boot, back post, you just demolish this guy. You hit him from the side, so he's such a huge target. He's not going to be moving. Mm. Delicious demo. <coughs> Nice. Unfortunately, you got bumped. I like that, though. Because if you didn't get bumped, you would have been able to uh, possess that. Careful, like, you going to ball cam here and just instantly rotating back post. You can stay wide here. Eli's rotating back. Just kind of swing out wide. Because that guy's passing it backwards. You would have been on this ball. If you didn't just turn off ball cam and just instantly go back, if you just wait a little bit to confirm what is happening on the play, even like, how much boost did you have? 24, and oh, that pad's not there. Still, even 24, and you could, you maybe would have been able to like get this pad right before you go up and you have 36. 36 is plenty. You can hit the ceiling with 36. And you hit that ball, you can maybe put on net or at least take it to the corner, take it to the sidewall. You can do anything. But now you just get out where you would have been on this ball. This is, the, I think this is the one I wanted to uh, watch with you. This is perfect. This is, this is, I can't think of a better opportunity to score. That guy's a sitting duck in net. You have a ball coming across the field, across midfield. You just grabbed full boost. You have at any, if you just drive and follow the ball right here, literally at any point, you could cut into it and get a huge direction change on the ball. But because of the way you take this angle, that you like side flip into it with the back of your car, you're hitting the ball in the same, like look at the direction your car's going. You can see the white lines here in the direction your car's going and look at the direction of the ball going this way. You're literally going in the same direction as the ball. You're not gonna get a direction change. You're just gonna hit a roller. But when you get direction change, that's how you generate power in Rocket League. So you gotta just drive out here and then turn into the ball to generate that power as you shoot it. And you can wait as long as you want. Wait until someone challenges you and as they take a step forward, that's when you hit it past them. So you want to make someone commit. But instead, you just you just pop it like that. I mean, you probably should have scored that or hit a bang or all high off the backboard above them. And then Eli's there to score it. So that's a huge opportunity just squandered because you were you were too playing too quick. You didn't take your time when you had time. This is that same exact play where you're grabbing this mid boost and you're rotating across midfield and you just instantly flip. You're... I don't even know what's going through your head right now. Like you maybe are looking at this guy because in this particular situation, um, but it feels like you're just like, yeah, time to go back post. And that's the only thought going through your head. You need to be maximizing your efficiency while you're on the field. Demo shooter. Demo shooter. Once that demo is confirmed, Eli can just catch this and he has the whole field. It'll literally be a one-on-one -on -one with their last man. And the more one-on-ones we can generate, the more goal opportunities we'll have. Yeah, you just have to go for the beat there. I'm okay with that. Ooh, okay. You can't do this. This is going to be huge. You're in a perfect position. You just stop going forward. Because you go forward, you're zigzagging and your car's pointing the wrong way. You're in a great – right here, great position. If this guy – hits it off the backboard and it goes uh, like past Eli where he can't get it, then you would be able to zoom in right now and block a pass. So that's good. Now you can't do anything. You can only drive up the backboard. This ball is not going to go to the backboard from here. And if it does, then you can turn your car and go to the backboard. You'll have all the time in the world. But like, look where you're, what is, what is going, what is here? If this were flakes doing a butter, you'd be like, what are you blocking? What are you, is the ball over here? I don't see the ball over here. I love when he does that. But yeah, just literally sit right here, slam in your brakes. You have plenty of boost, you'll be fine. Like, don't do this zigzag thing. You don't need to be back. This is literally back post. This is optimal back post. <laughs> you don't need to be on the post. Okay, enough of that. And you would have been there for this ball if you weren't pointing towards the backboard. Um, this is the perfect opportunity for a fake jump. By the way, I'll explain it. This is really high level. Um, but right now, if you jump, they have they will know that you have them beat if you jump for this ball. So they won't go for it. So this guy's going to start turning back or playing your clear. You jump, and then you just boost back down and you catch it. So the jump secures the ball as yours, and then you can boost down and catch it. It's a little bit risky, but it's a good play sometimes. 
But because you don't jump, that's why he challenged. If you would have jumped instantly, that guy would have backed off. And honestly, I think you have to. You don't have time to, to wait for this ball. So you either need to fake jump or you need to just go for it and just honestly carry it to the other side. This is a perfect setup to go for an air dribble. You don't even need to get like a clean air dribble you're carrying it. All you need to do is touch it one time and then follow it so you can like get a 50 or just get another touch to make it awkward for them. It was like a little bit, ooh, and now you gotta rotate out. You have two options. You either need to go for this ball right now, but you cannot rotate in, you either need to rotate back behind Eli now, or you need to go for the ball. You cannot do this half thing where you just go in front of him, like, where are you going? You need to go back close. Get back in rotation. <coughs> Luckily, the pay switch sides and it helps out. And now look how close you are to your team. Why do you flip here? You're in a perfect position. You grab that pad in, in front of you, maybe. Now you're right on top of Eli. And now you're going way too fast for this play. If you're still on the ground, honestly, you maybe could have challenged in front of Eli. And now you're backing up because you went you flipped for no reason. Like, you just didn't have to do that. Um, here's another thing that you might not realize you're doing. You stop boosting right there. You need to boost, especially once you hit the wall, even if you're going supersonic. When you're driving up the wall because gravity or whatever, um, your car is slowing down a lot as you're going up the wall. So every time you're going up the wall and you need to beat someone to the ball, you need to just hold the boost the whole way through. So you should be boosting, boosting, boosting. Now you just started boosting there, but you stopped boosting there for a second. If you were boosting that whole way, you can like insta flip into this, hit a banger. That guy's going to have an awkward save and you won't get bumped. You would have stayed there with it. And honestly, if you would have boosted the whole way, you wouldn't have even needed to flip. You could have just hit it one time and then maybe followed it up for another thing. Whoa, and then your boost manager on your way down. So you get bumped. Where are you boosting? Where are you going, bruh? You're boosting forward. Maybe use like 10 boosts to just like start going down a little bit faster. Don't use your boost till you hit the ground. You wasted like 70 boosts right there just to, to barely move forward. Boost is more efficient when you are on the ground. Okay, you're rotating front post here. I don't think you have 100. I think that's a bug. I think you're empty right now. Um, I could see maybe the appeal of getting this boost. As soon as you get it, you need to turn infield and go across. You need to get out of Eli's way. You cannot go at him. You need to go back post. In, honestly, you didn't even need to grab that midfield because maybe Eli wanted it or something and none of the opponents are going for it. So you just take this boost, pass, boost padding. And then honestly, when you rotate out wide like this, then maybe Eli's going to go up the wall and hit it back across and you can turn back in and go forward again. That's why rotating wide and across is way better. Like you're in such an awkward position right now. You're just waiting. You need to go for that. And here's why. Eli is rotating back right now. Your job as last man is not always to just do nothing and let the ball come to your side. Your job is kind of just to buy time and honestly avoid them getting possession. Because once we start to shadow, especially if two of us are shadowing, <laughs> they can make a quick pass and that's how they get out defense. This right here is why teams are allowed to get that pass from the person in net to the person on the wall. Where if you just dive and challenge right here, you can block that pass from happening. Because that pass is how Eli is going to get beat. So if you just dive right here, it'll be fine. Because you have someone back. If you did that as last man, because you're no longer last man. You're second man now because Eli is behind you. He is now third. So you can go for this. We're challenging here is not too helpful. Because what's going to happen? Even if that guy misses and you just hit it, it's going to bounce off the wall, bounce midfield. Eli has to get back and cover net. You're just going to be passing it to Internet Lab. Like maybe Colin would have been able to like play it back and, and cover you. But that challenge was really bad because the outcome would have been midfield. Where if you challenge right here, it would have kept it in the corner so we can maintain possession. So you either needed to challenge or you needed to get all the way back behind Eli. You can't challenge right there at midfield like that. I want to look at your recovery. You're here. Go demos. Demos as you're coming across field. This is the third time now. Demo this guy. Destroy him. But you're just insta flipping because you're just trying to get back as fast as you can. You have time. Two people are back in net. You have all the time in the world. If you would have demoed him, that would have been a free possession for us. But you made honestly a great save. You played really well defensively this game.
Don't try to shoot that. I mean, the top of the net was open. It shouldn't have been open. <laughs> if Internet Lad didn't boost at you and then slam his brakes right there, he would have been able to save any shot you put on net. And then Z Rage has the back half of the net covered. You have to put this high off the backboard here. Put it high off the backboard. Okay, Colin's literally all the way back. Um, but honestly, even if you put it high off the backboard, Eli can maybe turn and catch it and do something. But put it high off the backboard to your team. He, shooting this, I don't know if it's the highest percentage play. Good demo, though. Way to swing through. Nice. That's what you have to do. Just, I can tell you're awkward. You don't practice this enough. You want to come, turn. You want to get your car pointing this way. And you want to hit the ball right as it bounces off the backboard and then jump immediately. And then you literally just jump and you just hover here and let the ball bounce off you and then into the net. It's actually way easier if you just do just the first steps immediately. But you like don't hit that confidently enough and it bounces like too high. And then you backflip because you're trying to double jump too fast. That's an unfortunate miss too. We need to put that one in. I'm fine with that. You maybe... So this is scary because that uni guy is either going to dive at you right now or he's going to wait for your shot because you literally did shoot it. If I were you, honestly, I would call his bluff that he's going to challenge and I would just catch it. Because if you caught this, they're already turning back for your shot. If you just caught it, I think you would have uh, called their bluff and they would have been turning back and you could catch it and then flick it and get a good shot. Um, and the reason it's okay to call their bluff right now is because if he just, if Uni was diving at you and just like hit it off the top of your car and hits a roller, it's literally a pass to Eli. So it's a win-win. You either get a really good possession or Eli gets a really good possession. So <laughs> think you can think about that a little bit more too. Rather than your pass to nobody, you're just like hitting it towards the net, hoping for the best. Yeah, and you jump too soon here. This is the perfect opportunity. You want to be pointing towards it a little bit now. Um, so you want to be like here. If you're like too close that you're coming back across at the ball. If you're pointing like here, uh, then you can speed up with the ball or just go straight here. It's harder to come across at the ball. So if you can go a little bit with the ball as you're shooting, uh, but still enough that you can get power on it and everything, um, would have been better. And you just jump a little bit too early. Oh. <laughs> That's why you can't get power. You should have been able to score that, to be honest. This is perfect. Because you're. this is now you're finally waiting to confirm how the balance is going to go. I think you can back up a little bit. Because you have time to drive forward. You want to like meet the ball after, after it bounces down, you want to be able to drive forward to it. You're driving forward, and then just like the ball would have like landed on top of your car. It would have been awkward. But if the ball's a little bit for you, you would have been able to hit it with power. So you're covering down bounce, which is perfect. The down bounce doesn't happen, and now you spin around, and now you'll be able to cover this shot. And that shot doesn't happen. So now you're still just waiting, reading the situation. I like the way you played that. That's a really good shot from Eli. I know you guys can be playing a little bit more defensively. Um, I want to see how you do this kickoff. I'm sure Colin taught you, and not me. Okay, yeah. Um, you're doing the proper thing where you want to be holding the stick up as you jump. So immediately once you jump, that knows your car starts pointing down. So you're doing that. You just don't need to pull your car back this much. You literally can have your car just, the nose of your car just slightly higher than, like your car literally can be flat and you can still wave dash. So you, if you don't have to pull your car up that much, that's just going to slow you down a lot. Because right now you're boosting back up and that's slowing you down. So try not to get your nose of your car that high. Obviously you mess this one up, but... I'm not saying you do that every time. You can grab that back boost. That 20 boost is 20 boost. Uh, you're creeping up too much. You need Your job is to sit on backboard right here. That person is either going to clear it away and then Eli gets the ball, or he's going to hit it off the sidewall and try to pass it to this person or pass it to himself. Your job is to cover that. If he catches it, then you can go down and attack him. You'll be fine. But just sit here a little bit. Wait for this. If you were just on the backboard right here, boom, you're driving down. You're taking this, hitting off the backboard. You can double it. You can even just slam it off the backboard as a pass. Um, you'll be in a way better position. But because you're just creeping up too much, <laughs> you didn't play their hit properly. That actually is a really good pass, though. Uh, let's look at this challenge. Um, you're, what you're covering right now is if he catches it. 
You don't want him to catch it. He didn't catch it. You don't. You either need to pre-jump this, or you need to just now go for a demo. If you demo him right now, there's nobody else to follow it up. Both teammates are really far back. That's going to be a free ball for Colin. So don't go for that. Once he pops it over you, just let it go over you. Nice. Good demo chase. We gotta get better at catching these. You should be able to catch this 100% of the time. And not catch it. You should be able to, whoa, went wrong way. You should be able to get this ball to land on the nose of your car and roll up the wall. But you were, you, you misjudged it and you had to jump and then it bounces like this. You need to be able to let that hit the nose of your car and roll up the wall. Nine out of 10 times, at least. <laughs> I know it's kind of game though, it's the end of the game. Um, but yeah, so main thing, just after watching this one game, so you have to swing through midfield and get demos, uh, on your way to back post. Don't jump so early on a lot of things, work on those awkward catches. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that we got that dub on Friday. We made playoffs. It's going to be a huge week.